Hi everybody, welcome to the World's Dirtiest Workshop, Rider of the Storm here, Christopher Thunder. And uh, we're prototyping handguards today, I just wanted to show you where I was at. Uh, you may have noticed that I have recently built a hot and cold polycarbonate bender. And uh, I'm pretty good with shapes, geometry, measurements, that kind of thing. When you're making your handguards, uh, just make sure that the corners, which have a certain roundness to them, match from left to right. Um, cutting them out's easy and getting the shapes to match is pretty easy. You just flip the pattern over. But sometimes when you're sanding down the corners, you forget that in order to have it look good to your eye, the corners have to have a certain roundness to them. Otherwise, it may not look good to your eye. Now, I could add a couple more bends in here and really, you know, do this up, but I stepped back for a moment and I said, hey, less is more, and I want to know what you think. You know, what else could these handguards have to them? So, please leave me a note and uh, I would be happy to speak with you about my handguards. I want to thank everybody for watching the World's Dirtiest Workshop. This is Rider of the Storm. Christopher Thunder saying bye-bye. <coughs> me, 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 me. The trick to doing this right is to hold your hand about 12 inches away from the heat gun. When your hand starts to get too hot to tolerate, then you know when you should move the gun. Now for me, it's about five seconds at about 12 inches. So what I'm doing is I'm constantly keeping the gun moving at about 12 inches so I don't ripple the paint or burn it. You can paint only the back side of polycarbonate and you'll get a nice shiny finish. But sometimes it can look a little too scratched up. So what I'm doing is I'm painting both sides of the polycarbonate. Sometimes the polycarbonate will crack or break, and that can be from mishandling or overstressing of the polycarbonate. If you paint it, you can hide all that stuff. When you're prototyping handguards, try and give them some color and then set them up and see what the difference is. You can see here with the Gorilla Tape that the handguards looked a little small, so I added this little flap across the top to protect my hands at high speed. Now I have a completely different handguard. And this is what it looks like right now. Wow, what a difference. And this is what it looks like with both handguards in place. Wow. That is really cool. Sometimes less is more and simple is better than more complex. When you're working with a hardware, you might have to change where your vibration bushings are. In this case, because I have a flatter surface, I had to move the anti-vibration bushing from in between the guard and the plate to behind the plate to take up the distance of the bolt. This way, there's not a lot of the bolt sticking out here. Now, what I should do, because I'm using these new guards, I should replace the bolt with a shorter one, get out my plumbing pipe cutter, and shorten that vibration bushing to about half its thickness, and I'll get a better result. Before you ride anything, shake it, don't break it. That's nice and solid.